we'll be discussing about a case of a 60 years old hypertensive female who presented with altered state of consciousness for the past few days this was the ecg done at that time well now looking at the ecg we can see that there are some changes and these changes are related to the t waves now let's discuss the differentials for these T waves inversions. There are many possibilities for having these T wave inversions, and these can be incorrect lead placement, benign or juvenile T waves, ischemia or infarction, bundle branch block, pulmonary embolism, hypertrophy, electrolyte imbalances channelopathies, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and neurological. Now, one most important point to understand is that these T wave inversions are not localized to some areas, and these are more of a generalized in nature. So we can see that the T wave inversions are seen in the lateral leads 1, AVL, V5, V6, the interior leads V2, V3, V4, V5, and the inferior leads as well. So this means this is some process that has involved the heart globally. So what can be the reason for that? Before proceeding further, let's find some other pathologies in this ECG. These T wave inversions are pretty deep. So you can see that these are 13 mm, which is not usually seen. So does this have some significance or not? We'll discuss this further. Along with that inversions, we can see that there are very obvious ST depressions. So these are ST depressions which are very clearly seen in these leads. And again, an important point is the prolonged QT. So it has been calculated to be around 484 millisecond, which is definitely a prolonged QT. So combining all these facts, what we can decipher based on the history is that does this T wave inversions linked to some pathology with the nervous system. So there is a term called cerebral T waves. Now these T waves are not commonly seen in neurological issues, but whenever they are seen, they should not be missed. So what are these cerebral T waves? Cerebral T waves are seen in the cases of ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke or even traumatic brain injury as well. Now these T waves are very deep. So it has to be more than 5 mm or more than that. So these T waves are very obviously seen whenever they are present and these are symmetric as well. So these can be confused with ischemia. So for that, we should have a very good history for interpreting the ECG and this can be confused. So this should be bear in mind that the deep T wave inversions have some differentials as well that need to be ruled out sequentially based on history and examination and lab tests. Other ECG changes that can be seen are the ST depressions and prolonged QT, which was seen. However, bradycardia is again a feature of this neurological insult, which was not seen in our case, but whenever it's seen, it, it should not be missed. This has been associated with increased intracranial pressure. The pathology behind that is that the catecholamine surge that occurs because of the activation of the neuroendocrine axis. And studies have shown that these T waves, whenever they are present, they are somewhat linked to the dysfunction of the left ventricle. And interestingly, these T waves K 
can resolve spontaneously but sometimes they persist up to few weeks as well